Photography 1, Lecture 7, The Landscape. This is an undeniably seductive image um, and very typical of the kind of uh, photography that we've come to expect when we think about um, uh, the landscape, um, the natural landscape specifically. Um, here we have this uh, impossible looking arch um, lit by the sun, which happens to be coming up um, at that moment. And um, through the arch, we see a landscape with, uh, that's covered in snow. Um, and there's a cliff in the background um, that is also being lit by the sun. And um, this just draws you in and makes us believe that the, the earth is indeed, um, in some places anyway, uh, an absolutely stunning place. Uh, there are a few places that have been more photographed over the years than Yosemite. Um, this is one of the very first images made of the valley um, by Carlton Watkins, um, who was the first photographer to, um, to go into the, um, into the valley. And um, this image and others like it were instrumental in getting the um, National Park Service um, set up in the first place. Um, the idea of taking um, areas of the country that were pristine and keeping them that way um, was a novel idea. And, but with photographs like this, um, it was clear that these were very special places and deserved to be protected. Um, this is by Timothy O'Sullivan, um, who had been a um, war photographer during the Civil War. Um, but after the war, he um, joined um, several um, expeditions into the West to um, document, um, as Watkins had, um, a lot of the uh, natural phenomena that um, had only been um, vaguely heard about um, from uh, travelers um, in, the, in the time preceding them. This is Canyon de Chez, and um, these outcroppings are absolutely astonishing. And um, one of the things that makes it as convincing as it is, is that it's kind of difficult to see, but in the lower left-hand corner, um, in the sort of meadow, there are um, several teepees that have been set up. So you get some sense of how large these, uh, um, these rocks really are. This image by um, William Henry Jackson um, was made um, in 1873 and depicts a, um, a valley um, in the middle of which is this creek. Um, this was as he found it and um, as it had uh, developed naturally over uh, millennia. Uh, in 1977, um, Mark Klett and um, Joanne Verberg um, went back to exactly the same spot and um, working very hard to uh, mimic the angle um, as precisely as possible of this earlier image. You can tell by the outcroppings and the uh, hills in the background that this is virtually the same point of view um, to show what had changed. This was um, a valley that um, would be um, dammed and um, turned into um, a lake. Um, so this gives us some sense of how the, the landscape has changed. Um, Klett, um, in particular, um, made a great many of these kinds of what he referred to as re-photographs um, of places like this, um, taking the work of, of people like um, William Henry Jackson and, and others and um, revisiting them to see what, what changes have, have uh, come to pass. Um, this is also uh, by Mark Klett, um, and it includes a number of um, images. The, um, you can see the one um, image inset into um, an image that Klett has made um, more recently. Um, is this one image with a number of people standing on top of a, um, a rock. And, um, and then to the right, there is a colorized version of another landscape. Both of these are made in the uh, Grand Canyon. So what he's doing is 
going from a this brief photo photographic um, uh, series that he had been working on, which is almost scientific in nature um, and interest, and going into something that is more um, artistically, aesthetically um, interesting to him. Still employing the same notion of um, going to the same places and uh, photographing them again, but here um, there is a graphic uh, uh, difference in the way that he's dealing with uh, the material. And just so that uh, no one gets the notion that um, all of this is about American photography, um, Europeans, um, um, the British, and um, uh, Germans, and French, and, and Italians were also all very interested in, um, in the landscape and um, photographed it extensively. Um, this is by Peter Henry Emerson, and um, his specialty, if, if you will, um, was uh, photographing these very idyllic um, uh, country landscapes in England. This is clearly a pond in winter, um, and we see a couple of figures. Um, this is obviously a very small pond. You see one sort of cloaked figure in the background and another figure um, beyond him um, in the background. Um, Eugene Ache was also, um, although he wouldn't really be characterized as a natural landscape photographer, he certainly went into um, uh, the landscape. Um, in this case, it's a park, so there was perhaps some control exerted on the uh, landscape, but um, this is still primarily natural um, phenomena with the exception of the statue in, in the foreground. This was made in the um, last couple of years of his life, and uh, but was made in uh, March. So as a result, the trees have no leaves on them, and um, there's a very kind of stark feel to it. Um, you'll also notice that there is vignetting in the uh, upper left and right-hand corners. That's actually the shadow of the lens uh, projected um, because his lenses did not cover the um, film plane uh, as effectively as, uh, as they might have. You can also see clip marks where the uh, glass plates that he used to photograph um, kept the, the plate from uh, moving around um, in the plate holder. Um, apparently he was intrigued enough with this scene that he went back in June of the same year and photographed it again with the trees filled with leaves and um, in a very different light, um, it looks like probably um, early morning sunlight um, coming in still soft, but um, um, it has a very different character to this one, which is rather somber and, and uh, you know, about autumn. Um, Albert Ranger Patch was a German photographer um, who was also very um, interested in the natural landscape, although he also photographed a lot of um, um, urban um, scenes. Um, this, I, this image of, of a uh, forest in Germany um, is, I think, in, in, uh, remarkably contemporary um, in feel, although it's black and white. Um, the starkness of these trees, which recede into the background um, with uh, the mist, making them less and less well-defined, um, is um, really pretty astonishing and absolutely beautiful. This is an image by Edward Weston of Oceano, which is uh, an area in uh, California that is filled with uh, sand dunes. And um, one of Weston's um, best known subjects was nudes. And um, there's no denying the uh, correlation between these dunes and um, um, a nude uh, woman. And um, he saw things um, as having um, definite correlations between them. So the sand dunes and the nudes um, serve for him the same aesthetic purpose. Uh, I don't think anybody could talk about um, uh, photographs of the natural landscape and, and leave Ansel Adams out. Um, this is one of his best known images. It's a uh, clearing winter storm and uh, was made in 1937. And uh, 
is, I think, a rather remarkable image, um, and, and it, uh, it's certainly understandable why it's become as well known as it has. Um, there's something about these um, uh, clouds that um, are either just, well, it says clearing winter storms, so these are clouds that are in the process of dissipating, and as they dissipate, the sun is starting to come out and shining on the, um, uh, not only the rock outcroppings, but also on uh, one of the parks, uh, you know, this is taken in Yosemite, um, one of the parks, uh, many um, spectacular waterfalls. Um, but compositionally um, and tonally, this is just, um, I think, an astonishing image. This is by Minor White, and um, one of the things that uh, White did, um, in this case, this is the, um, I believe in the 1950s, um, was to experiment with um, alternative processes and materials. This is an image that was taken with um, um, infrared film, um, which uh, sees the light spectrum very differently than um, uh, standard black and white film, um, in that it, it reads, uh, reds very differently, blues very differently. So as a result, the tonality um, of anything that, um, especially anything natural, anything organic, is very different from how it's seen in a, in a, black, in a standard black and white image. <coughs> um, it, it looks like there's snow here, but in fact, the infrared film has read um, anything green as um, almost white or, or white or almost white. And um, so as a result, we, this looks like it's um, a, a snow scene, when in fact it's not. This is another image by Minor White. And um, I, I think it's, this is quite beautiful for its very stark beauty. Um, the sky is quite dark in the background um, with this very soft um, kind of amorphous cloud um, in the middle, which is also casting these uh, very subtle uh, reflections in the water, and then you have the very, very. If you look at it carefully, the the very hard um, lines of the the um, waves and the surface of the water, um, in contrast to that uh, very soft cloud. This is by Paul Caponegro, and um, it is of a stream in Connecticut, um, and you can tell by the um, softness of the water in the distance that um, this was a quite a long exposure. Um, and um, there is also a softness to the reflection in the foreground um, because uh, although you can't see it, the water is actually um, not still at all. Um, and as a result, it, it kind of records um, shadows and reflections um, as almost ethereal. Um, one of the things that's, I think, also interesting about this is that uh, compositionally it, it's such that it looks like it could be upside down, um, largely because of the reflections of the trees being inverted um, and um, also because at least half of the frame is taken up with those reflections. This is by uh, Ari Cartier-Bresson. It's, as many of his images are, taken in, in his native France. Um, he wasn't really considered a landscape photographer per se, um, but this has been one of his um, best known images and is certainly of, um, uh, I mean, these, these are obviously planted trees, but um, everything um, that we see pretty much is um, uh, of the organic world. Um, it's a really powerful image. We've got this sort of um, almost heart-shaped um, configuration of, of the trees, which then recede into the distance and then are um, uh, mirrored in um, other stands of trees in the background. Um, and in the middle of it, we have this road that um, uh, heads directly into um, where these trees come together. Very powerful image. Robert Adams, uh, an American photographer, is um, interested in, in very different um, aspects of the natural landscape. 
and very often will include uh, the natural landscape in relation to um, the built landscape. In this case, this is California. And um, in the background um, on the left, we can see there's a, a freeway and I believe it's a, um, a wash um, with these trees in the foreground. Um, the trees don't look like they're doing all that well. Um, Adams has been, um, is very much an activist and um, very concerned about the natural landscape and what's happening to it. And um, these images, images like this, um, this and, and images like this are um, very much his way of letting us know that um, uh, lots of, uh, that a great deal of the earth is in danger of um, disappearing or morphing to the point where it's going to become unrecognizable. This is another image by Adams. And um, again, very, he's very interested in um, how growth um, occurs in, um, in the landscape. And um, he's concerned that scenes like this are, are fast disappearing um, and would like to see the, them protected in some way. Lee Friedlander is, of course, a photographer of a very different stripe than virtually any of the ones that we've seen up to this point. Um, he's been um, interested in the natural landscape, um, although he came to it fairly late in his career. Um, and, but um, I should point out that while that looks like a um, uh, Joshua tree, it's in fact a sculpture and um, made to look or resemble a, a Joshua tree until you look at it carefully and realize that it's, um, um, its framework is, is, um, has been all hollowed out. Um, I'm not sure what the material is that was made to, to make it, but um, it's not the real thing. At the same time, he's, um, as he often does, he's used the interior of um, his vehicle um, as a framing device. And um, so at one window, we see the, um, the Joshua tree. And then at the, uh, another, we see these um, dark mountains um, and clouds. And um, so it's, it, it, the, it has the feel of taking the um, uh, the built urban world in the form of the car out to a landscape that only partially has just the landscape um, in it, <clears throat> excuse me, just the natural landscape in it. Um, that's not to say that, that Friedlander isn't interested in the natural landscape, because he is um, as well. Um, and um, this is uh, one of a number of images. I, I believe this one is Central Park. Um, that he has taken um, of trees as they exist. Um, and here, um, compositionally, it's, it's, I think, really interesting to see how um, the tree itself um, Im is mimicked by the, uh, the shadow of the tree um, and with these other stark trees in the background. It's very kind of complex um, composition. Michael Kenna is a British photographer who lives in, in the States. And um, he has gone around the world uh, to a variety of different places. In this case, um, these are mountains in China. Um, and anybody who's seen um, Chinese um, mountain landscape paintings or, or drawings um, will recognize the, um, the those in this compositionally and um, with beautiful uh, mist kind of enshrouding them. And this one um, outcropping in the foreground um, that almost looks like a place where someone would put a, uh, a um, uh, either a logo or a signature, um, we have a very sharply defined um, um, sort of mountaintop. Kenna is also interested in landscapes that have some human element to them, and um, but in this case, um, extremely stark. I mean, this is really reduced to um, its uh, 
most basic elements. You know, we've got a snow-covered um, hillside, um, a gray sky, and a fence that recedes um, irregularly off into the distance. And compositionally, I think it's very powerful. Stephen Shore, um, who is primarily known for his work in the urban landscape um, and an early color photography pioneer, um, also in his travels around the states, um, came across scenes like this one um, with uh, considerable irony, seeing the landscape um, with the billboard of a landscape in the middle of it um, with parts of it for some reason um, redacted or deleted. Um, he was also uh, drawn to places like um, this where um, tourists go and, and people who are interested in, in um, uh, visiting the natural landscape um, and photographing them, uh, enjoying um, the various things that people do when they go into the mountains and hike. This is by Richard Mizrach, um, who has been drawn to uh, the, the desert over and over again um, in, his, um, in his career. Um, this is an image from a series that was made in the mid-70s that really um, established him as an artist. And this was uh, made using um, a uh, handheld strobe, uh, a flash, um, to light the Ocotillo in the foreground um, as the sun had uh, was disappearing. The, the camera's obviously on a tripod, and um, this is actually a very long exposure, um, but with the advent of the light um, giving the Ocotillo um, a sharp um, definition. More recently, this is from, uh, I believe, 1999, um, Mizrach has aimed his camera out um, the back of his house in the Berkeley Hills at um, the Golden Gate. And um, this, this is part of a series that he um, did uh, over a number of years um, with it in varying um, kinds of uh, um, weather and um, um, with different cloud formations and um, different times of day um, with, I think, startlingly different results from one to the next. This is also Golden Gate, which is almost invisible um, behind the clouds, but if you do look carefully, you can see the one of the towers of the bridge. He's also, as I said, very interested in um, the desert. This is the Salton Sea, and um, a, uh, a place called Battleground Point. Um, seen here in, uh, in very muted tones, probably very late in the day. Um, and yet it's one of a series of images that he took um, apparently on the same day, but under um, changing lighting conditions um, with very different results um, with each one. Um, this image by Robert Ketchum um, is uh, one in which he refers to it as um, overlooked in America. And again, he's a, a, an environmental activist. He's very concerned with um, what's been happening to um, the landscape. And, and his concern is that, that it's disappearing, um, at least this natural landscape. Um, but I also wanted to point out just a technical feature. Um, this is an, uh, another image where this is a, a very long exposure. And um, as a result, we see the water, um, the waterfall um, has become um, very striated. Uh, we don't see the water clearly. Um, and yet all of the leaves on the trees are um, absolutely crisp and clear. Um, this requires a great deal of patience because even the smallest um, uh, ripple of, of air is going to um, throw things out of focus. Um, that is the end of my presentation on the landscape.